All right, hello everybody. Welcome to uh, our lesson for uh, the 14th, uh, February, uh, Motives and Biological Needs. So our objectives and standards to um, analyze how biological motives impact motivation and um, to compare biological motives and how they impact decisions. Take a moment there to read over the standards, please. Excuse me. And desired result. How do biological needs motivate us? Vocabulary: uh, lateral hypo hypothalamus or the LH. This is part of the hypothalamus in your brain that produces hunger hunger signals. And the ventromedial hypothalamus, the VMH, is another part of the hypothalamus that can cause someone to stop eating. Okay. So needs of biological behavior. There are times when behaviors are determined by the internal or physiological state of an organism, um, such as breathing, uh, you know, uh, feeling ill, things like that. Uh, humans and other living creatures need certain things to survive. These things include things like um, uh, water, oxygen, salt, vitamins, etc. Um, and these are critical to our survival and our physical well-being. Now, dramatic changes in these things can lead to changes in behavior as well. <coughs> so keeping the balance. Living organisms have built-in regulating systems that work to maintain internal processes. Uh, they control things like body temperature and sugar levels. For example, if your body temperature drops below a certain level, you begin to shake or shiver, uh, your blood vessels will constrict, and you put on uh, more clothes to keep warm. Uh, your body causes a change in your behavior to keep you warm and to raise your body temperature. So remember that it is the tendency of all organisms to correct imbalances, such as being cold or hot, uh, in the body, um, and these are known as homeostasis. There are many elements that can impact homeostasis, and one of those is, of course, hunger. <clears throat> so the motivation of hunger. So we will often eat when we see or smell food because we are hungry. Other times we might just eat because uh, it's a habit. For example, um, you know, maybe your lunchtime in school is at 1230. Um, so you naturally get hungry around 12.30 to eat lunch. That's a habit that causes your hunger symbol, uh, signals to go off every day at 12.30 because that's when you typically eat lunch. If you don't eat lunch at 12.30 on a given day, then uh, you might find yourself becoming maybe sick or what they call hangry or uh, upset or tired because your body is used to you eating um, at a certain time every day. Um, if we ignore these factors of hunger, it can affect our behavior. So these behavior changes are responding to the motivation of hunger inside your body. And our bodies also require food to grow, to store reserves, and to repair. <coughs> the portion of the hypothalamus, which is called the lateral hypothalamus or the LH, produces symbols of hunger. I put here on the map here, or a picture here, where your hypothalamus is, the blue thing here. So that's your brain, that's where it's located. Uh, so the hypo, lateral hypothalamus um, produces hunger symbols. If the lateral uh, hypothalamus were to be removed, um, an animal would starve or um, stop eating. Now there's also another part of the hypothalamus known as the ventromedial uh, hypothalamus or the VMH, which has a different effect. This will cause an animal to slow down or stop eating um, if it's removed or, or things like that. Now, there are other factors of hunger <coughs> that can influence hunger as well. The gluostasic theory suggests that the hypothalamus monitors the amount of readily available energy or glucose in the blood. When blood glucose lever levels enter cells and they drop, it triggers the lateral hypothalamus or the LH to fire and creates hunger. Now, during the same time, the pancreas in your body, it's an organ in your body, uh, releases insulin, which converts energy into calories to be used immediately or later. This is from Woods in 1991. 
Another thing that affects hunger, uh, the set point um, plays in the hunger as well. And this is the weight <coughs> around which your daily weight fluctuates. So again, uh, eating more or less during a certain day will obviously trigger um, you to eat, eat more or, or so. Now, influence of other factors. There are other factors that influence hunger besides biological, such as the need to eat to, you know, give us energy or make us feel better or whatever the case may be. And these are known as psychosocial hunger factors. Um, these are external cues, such as the smell and appearance of food that can impact behavior. I put this picture of uh, this food over here. I'm guessing this might be steak or something like that or some type of meat. Um, but I thought, you know, uh, the, you know, it might, it might not look appetizing to you, but most people would say that probably looks pretty good to them if they go to a nice restaurant and looks pretty appetizing. Um, so seeing that and smelling that and looking at that might impact you to want to eat more. Um, seeing others eat can also tend us to eat too. So if you go to a party and you say, yeah, I'm really not that hungry, but they have chips and dip, or maybe you're watching a football game or a sporting game or whatever, and everybody's kind of snacking on food, you might not really be hungry but seeing everyone else eat and engage in that behavior of um, eating and being social and eating um, will cause us to eat too. Now, we can also eat because we're bored, which I do sometimes as well. We might just eat because we're bored. Uh, or again, we might do it because a habit. For example, a lot of people, and maybe you can include yourself in this, is um, when you go to the movies or you watch a movie, you might want to have a bag of popcorn. I know when we go to the movies, my mom always has to have a bag of popcorn with her. So um, no matter what movie it is or time of day, it could be early in the morning, it could be late at night, she always has to have a bag of popcorn. Um, so that's another thing. That's a habit. You get popcorn when you go to the movies or maybe you get candy um, when you go to the movies. So these psychosocial um, factors in hunger can also cause us to maybe not eat enough, such as, you know, maybe you're concerned about your weight and, um, you know, maybe other people aren't eating, so you don't eat, you know, um, or you wait for somebody to show up to eat. Um, and uh, it can also cause binge eating, so which can lead to obesity. All right, so our closure, how do biological needs motivate us? What causes um, certain biological things to happen and how those biological things uh, impact our behavior? How do they motivate us and change our behavior? All right, so think about that, and I hope you have a good rest of your day or night, and I'll talk to you soon.